Hello again folks, in tonight's video I'm going to be building this KK Moon DIY calculator kit. It's quite an interesting little calculator as it's got a built in resistor decode function so you can basically tap in uh, the colours present on your resistor and it'll actually tell you the value of it um, which is quite handy I think you'll agree. But in typical fashion um, we'll open up have a look at what comes with the kit and then we'll proceed and build it. Now I have brought in the cutting mat this evening and that's just to, to give me a, a work area. So basically if it's on green, I know that you can see on the, the, the footage. Um, I did do a live stream last night and some of my footage was actually off camera, which isn't ideal. So that's why the cutting mat's back. But the ESD mat's there for, for you purists out there. <laughs> but yeah, let's crack on ahead and have a look. I'm gonna use my little Swiss Army knife again. I suppose I could do it on the cutting mat because that's what it's for. There we go. So we'll tip all the bits and bobs out. Make sure there's nothing in there, get rid of that. Um, clearly that is the acrylic enclosure with that horrible paper stuff, uh, which takes an eternity to remove which you may have seen last night. We've got some tactile buttons. Clicky, clicky, quite nice, uh, nice tactile, uh, nice tactile buttons, yeah, quite like those. Um, we've got the, the button caps and little clear covers and I just saw them a moment ago. We've got the, the sort of legend, if you like, or the, the, yeah, the legend for the for the buttons and those will go under those clear keycaps. We have a PCB, double sided, nice quality. A few scratches on there. Silk screen, all the values are on there, so that's quite handy. Um, header for the display, the IC, yeah, fairly straightforward. Got some rubber buttons for the bottom, stop it sliding about the workbench. Let's have a look at the instructions. Okay, seem fairly straightforward. Like I say, the silk screen's got all the, the component values on there, so I don't think it's going to be too difficult to build. The hardest bit about this kit, I would imagine, would be or will be putting the acrylic case together. In here we have presumably an HD44780 um, LCD display, two line. Yep. These are, um, you get these everywhere nowadays. They used to be really, really expensive, but you can pick them up for about, uh, you know, a couple of bucks or, you know, quid and a half or whatever on eBay these days and I quite like them. I know they're a bit old school retro uh, nowadays but I quite like them. We've got our IC there. What was that? Uh, 15W413AS. Absolutely no idea what that is. Uh, possibly a microcontroller or something like that. We've got some black screws. We've got some Steel screws, various spacers, nuts, such like. And of course the rest of the components. Not a lot to this, uh, not a lot to this bag I should say. Let's tip it out and see what we've got. So we've got our two battery holders, a header for the display and corresponding pins. few those Difficult to see, they look like diodes from a distance there. A um, few resistors, a couple of diodes, a couple of transistors, and uh, a little ceramic cap. So what we'll do is I'll pause the video, get this set out, uh, sort out my values, and in fact I don't think I need to because the values are written on there. Which is quite handy, apart from those ones. Um, yeah, well, give me a second. Right, welcome back. Yeah, I just wanted to check the resistor values. Um, if only I had a, a calculator that could do that for me. Eh? Right, we'll get cracking. So very few components uh, on here. The, the biggest job, I think, let's say, is going to be popping the... Um, what do you call it? Acrylic case together. So, while I'm doing this, 
rather than being an awkward silence. Uh, I'll talk about my live stream last night. Yes, it was the first time I did it. Um, wasn't ideal, um, but I enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully, uh, if any of you watching this watch the live stream, you enjoyed it too. A um, few learning points for me for next time. Yeah, sort out the video. Um, turns out I think it was recording in 15 frames per, per second. And... Um, yeah, it wasn't particularly good quality. The audio wasn't brilliant because it was just using a, a headset rather than a, a proper professional microphone. Um, the kit itself I built last night was the Simon game thing, again from KK Moon. I, I should point out, um, I have purchased these myself. They weren't supplied or anything like that. So this is my, my own purchases. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. It was good getting that um, interaction with with the viewers, people commenting and stuff and asking questions. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, maybe tweak it slightly for next time. Make it a little bit more professional, shall we say. I was possibly going to do this um, as a live stream. But given the uh, given the problems I had <laughs> yesterday, um, you know, I thought if something goes wrong, I don't want it to drag on and drag on like it did last night. Although I was going to close the feed down, but I kept getting people were saying, "No, no, just keep carry on, carry on," which I did. And yeah, um, on that note, though, I do know that it does have a seven five five zero voltage regulator. So that's the five volt regulator. So. Um, hopefully we won't have problems with that tonight. So that's all the resistors in. In fact, I might as well chuck the diodes in while we're here. Um, yeah, so if you haven't seen the feed, basically the kit came supplied with... The only duplicate component in the entire kit was an extra 7550. And when I put the kit together and tested it... Um, it didn't work, I was getting a dead shot. And it was the uh, the regulator that failed, so I, I took it off, put um, put another one back, uh, the spare one in, and the problem remained. So I used a 7805, yeah, big beefy thing, and uh, swapped that out and it, and it worked. So... I don't know if it was a faulty faulty batch or maybe it was drawing too much current or it just seemed really strange that it would fail or both would fail. But I suggested that possibly um possibly it was a faulty batch and that's why they had included a spare a spare unit a, a spare component. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right. So we get these resistors in. We're nearly there. So I'm using this chisel tip, this is a bevel tip I should say. Somebody suggested it's slightly better for soldering. Um sorry. <coughs> you can <coughs> excuse me, you can get better um thermal contact between the both the pad and the, the component but I'm, I'm just not feeling it. I like my pointy, uh, pointed tips. They seem to work a bit better, so I think I may, I think I may go back to that sometime in the near future. Okay, so that's our resistors in. We'll get rid of those spares. They can go in a pile. Next thing we're going to pop in is the resistor. Let's just verify it. One hundred four, one hundred four. Pop that in there like so. And we'll put in our um, transistors and voltage regulator. I have laid those out in the correct order to avoid any problems. And there we have them. So, just line those up and let's get them in. 
So if MD, um, if MD did see the stream last night, if you did any feedback or, or such like, by all means let me know, and um, I'll try and make it a bit better for next time. Like I say, is there anything you'd like me to do uh, live? Keep it clean. <laughs> all right, let's just make sure those are nice and vertical. Yep. Okay, trim those leads up. And uh, yeah, we'll just pop these battery holders in there, I think. And <clears throat> once I've done that, I think I'll, uh, I'll pause the video, put the headers on and then uh, maybe a few of the buttons and I'll come back to you when when those are uh, ready to go. So the these are just pressed steel and they just uh, protrude through a slot on the board. Let's see how that looks. Too bad, I'll just reflow that and make sure it's flush. And you probably heard that click in there. And there we go. So there's one of them on. So let's see what I'll do is I'll, I'll pause the video now because it's dragging on a bit. Um, and I'll start populating the, the switches uh, and the headers, etc. So be with me and I'll catch you shortly. Right, welcome back yet again. Okay, so I've put... Um, the headers and stuff on and put in most of the switches. Just got a couple more to do. So I'm just going to show you the technique I used when doing this. Um, I just simply popped them into the board like so uh, and basically just bent the leads over. Um, they're, they're quite a loose fit. Um, the smaller, you know, the is it six by six millimeter tactile switches you get, those tend to lock down and hold themselves flush to the board where these are, you know, quite loose. Um, so just by bending the leads, it helps secure uh, secure them. And then all I did was uh, tack up two of the two of the corners, diagonal corners. And then once I've done that, just apply pressure to the switch. And if you if you listen, you might hear a click. There you go, and again, and what one was it? Oh yeah, this one. Click, and no click on there. Once you've done that, then just solder up the other two corners, and you're good to go. Job done. Okay, next thing on the list to do um, is to apply the uh, pins or the header pins to the back of the display. Because of course this is going to push into the the board up here. Looked like there was something in there. Um, but looking at the the acrylic here, you can see it is in an angle. So clearly, if we put this in at 90 degrees to the board and this in at 90 degrees to the board it's not going to fit uh, the, the enclosure so what I'm thinking is is tilting it like so um, now I don't know if the angle will match the acrylic but it'll be, it will be won't be far off so if we do need to bend it slightly it's not going to stress the board too much so what I'll do is I'll tack up one, one end like so, I'll just keep it on the board and let gravity hold it in place and then while I'm reflowing it I'm just gently bringing it towards me. And as you can see the pins are at a slightly uh, smaller angle so that should uh, should make the assembly of it 
that a little bit easier. So I'll quickly go along, solder these up. In fact, I think we'll use finer solder because I was using that thicker solder for the, the larger pads on the switches. And um, I think it's just a little bit too much, uh, too thick for this job. Now I have started doing the keycaps as well. I just wanted to, to get my technique right on those and I'll just show you those in a second. <clears throat> Nearly there. Just a quick inspection, see if I need to apply any more swords to any of those joints. Again, a fairly large pads. That looks good to me, what do you think? Yeah, that'll do. Okay, right, let's get cracking. So the keycaps, uh, as I probably explained this, a short while ago we've got the cover we've got the, the button itself and in between uh, we've got the little uh, button sort of legends or whatever you want to call it now i have uh, prepared some as i've said just a second ago and the key thing about doing these is they seem to be slightly wider so the height's not too bad but what i've uh, tried to do is is cut the the black divisions division lines uh, has cut those off so on the vertical we want to go slightly to the right of the black line and cut that off and then slightly to the left of the black line and cut that off and then just repeat that process does help if you've got sharp scissors and what this does is it prevents the it prevent, uh, prevents the the paper from curling up uh, when it goes into the, the key cap. A couple of them I had to to take off. So all you do then is is pop the pop the paper in like so, and then take your uh, blue button and press it in, and there you go. You can see you've got a nice little button there. It does help if you use tweezers. Well, it certainly helped me by using tweezers. And these caps do go in the same way. Either way, I should say. Um, but just for the sake of consistency, what I've done is um, I've... Uh, so on the vertical, what I've done is the two... You can see there's two long sides of the clip and two short sides. The two long sides... I've put horizontal and I've done that with all the, the switches, uh, caps I should say, sorry. Uh, I don't think it would make any difference at all, uh, whatever way you do it. I just thought it would be better to do them all the same way in case it did make a, you know, it felt slightly different uh, as you were pressing them. You know, they may go to one side or whatever. But there we go, that's all our, our key caps done. So the next thing to do is to apply them. And I, I did wonder, you know, why have they given you two sets in case you cut them the wrong way or whatever? But of course, it's just so you know uh, where they go. And so mode is top left. I'll get an arrow which goes there. Square root. And then there's a, a power button there. And they just uh, pop on relatively easy, and they do they do have a bit of 
uh, rotational movement but hopefully the acrylic will, will line those up so again I'll pause the video I'll put the rest of the caps on I'll pop the IC in and then I'll come back to you when we're about to put the display on see you in a moment right welcome back yet again okay so I've had a look at the uh, instructions to see how the uh, case goes together and it's it's fairly straightforward so what I've done is we've got these smaller screws here so there's the black ones are for the, the display the long ones hold the two halves of the keypad together and the short ones are what hold the actual whole thing together and the board into the base so what I've done is I've uh, populated the five screws uh, in the bottom part of the case so there's two uh, each side parallel with one another and um, one at the top right and the board uh, sits down on top of those uh, with the aid of these little spacers which are just laser cut acrylic as well and you just pop those across break them off and that's what <coughs> excuse me that's what keeps the the board off the acrylic so it doesn't get scratched up and doesn't stress the board And that should just sit on there quite nicely, like so. And then we'll take our, our five nuts and thread those on. Again, I'm not going to bore you with the, the detail of that. So again, I think I'll pause the video and uh, get the board secured in. Uh, I'll put the display onto the, onto the acrylic and then I'll come back to you. Apologies for... Uh, the constant cuts in this video but I don't want to it's already 20 minutes long I think 22 minutes long so I don't want to keep the video rambling on just me doing a little boring pieces so catch you in a moment okay this is a home straight we're gonna assemble it all now so yeah that's all screwed in there nice and easy I can't stress enough pun intended that you don't want to over stress the um the acrylic if you tighten these uh, screws and nuts up too tight the acrylic will just crack so just tweak it and that's uh, that's going to be quite enough okay so the next thing I'm going to do is pop in some batteries only the best uh, energizers I don't have any Poundland ones left so I had to buy these from the shop yesterday now it says in the instructions that it should be a, a, a 20, 2030, these are 2032s, so you know, 2032s, um, but they should fit fine, I would have thought. He says, there we go. Just that one. Oh, a, bit, a bit tight, but they're in there. Let's uh, pop on the display and verify that it does turn on, which it does. That's obviously good. I think it turns off after 30 seconds. So yeah, that that doesn't look too far off where we need it to be. And I, think, I don't think it's going to stress too much if we tighten it down. Um, yeah, if, if, if we tighten it down, I think it's going to be okay. So next thing we're going to do is... Um, Pop on, let me see, we'll pop in the back here. I'll just dust off any dust, funnily enough, just to make sure that it, we don't want dust inside it because it will ruin the look, won't it? So that sits in there like so. Our side pieces will go in next. Like that and yeah that's gonna that's gonna tighten down there quite nice I think other side piece if we can get it to pop in there we go goes in like that and the bottom goes in here and hooks into the sides and that holds the sides together like that okay now I kept the film on here if you've not seen it the, the paper uh, just get a sharp knife obviously be careful you don't want to scratch it but just lift up the corner and gently peel that back
and take care of your desk because if it starts to tear it can be rather bother bothersome trying to get it off and then this part is going to go under here and hopefully the whole thing should come together quite nicely and it does yeah so I'll just pop the the large screws down here just now and those go all the way through to the bottom like so again probably just do these up finger tight I'll just uh, keep the camera rolling now because I'm sure you're sick of me pausing the video by now There we go. Oops, where did that go? And the last one. Come on. There we go. Okay, so the other screws, um, I'll pop this one in first. So these go in uh, through, there's a, a, a cross shape there. I don't know if you can see it with the reflection. But those go in there like that. And essentially, there's a, a, a captive nut. So having built these types of cases before, uh, the best thing I've found to do is just grab a tiny pair of pliers and put the nut in this slot and then just gently drop it down and the screw should catch it like so and then again just the, the slightest of tweaks on that let's uh, bring the display in That's exactly the same process on the sides. Might not need the pliers. Oh, he says dropping the nut into the case. There we go. As always, what's and all? It's proper stuck. No, there we go. <laughs> so again, we'll just take two. quite difficult to line up but I think we've got it there so we'll pop the screw in like so we'll use a needle nose pliers we'll try not to drop it oh I think it just it just started there as a And we'll do the same on the other side. Ugh. Not again. See if we can get this out without having to disassemble it. There. <laughs> okay. Take seventy four. You know what? I'll do that after the video. <laughs> we'll take with little rubber key uh, keypads, little rubber pads for the bottom. And that's just like I said before, it's just gonna stop it from slipping across your workbench. Just put one in each corner. Ah, 
and you know what the glue stuck <laughs> the glue stuck to the uh, to the what do you call it I oh, know it hasn't I felt like the glue had stuck to the the backing paper okay the last thing to do is to remove the protective film from the display And there we have it, hopefully that'll focus. So let's just do a, a basic calculation. Five times four equals 20. So that works quite well. Let's change the mode. So we've got, right, okay. So we've got um, the ability to, what do you call it? Select either uh, so it's resistor code 5 ring or resistor code 4 ring. So what I'll do is I'll test What we'll say a uh, hundred K so nice and easy. So uh, Oh, it's turned off So brown black brown and what will we go with say Put was five yeah gold yeah, oh, oh, it tells you there. So yeah, a hundred ohm, um, five percent. So let's just try a, a random one. So we'll go. And it was at this point that my camera stopped recording, as I'd been rambling on for so long that it had reached its maximum recording time. Never mind. I'll take you through the last uh, couple of functions. So I've showed you the calculator and the resistor decode. The next. Uh, function we've got is the series resistor calculator for LEDs and what this enables you to do is work out what value of resistor you require uh, for your LED on a specific supply voltage. So we've got VI which is the supply voltage, we've got VD which is the uh, forward voltage of the diode and we subtract the diode voltage from the supply voltage. So we're not going to use any Carl Vorderman uh, style maths here keep it nice and simple we'll say we've got a 12 volt um power supply and the forward voltage of our led is three volts so we subtract those two to give us nine volts we then press the square root or up down button here and we'll say that it needs 20 milliamps uh, to work optimally optimally is that optimal 20 milliamps we'll say uh, we then press enter and that would tell us that we'd require a 450 ohm resistor in series uh, you know to protect the, the diode so that's a really handy function and um, of course you can go bananas with this if you want say we had a difference of 100 volts and um, we'll keep the same 20 milliamps we'd need a 5k uh, resistor in that in that uh, instance Finally, we've got our hex decimal converter. It simply put the number you, you want converted to hex decimal and it tells you. So one to one, and that's clearly gonna be all the way through to nine. Um, of course, 10 would be A, yeah, and so on and so forth. And, you know, you can put in whatever you want and it will display it. So yeah, back to the, the calculator function there. Yeah, I really like this little kit. Um, Nice to put together, nice quality kit, good quality components. Um, yeah, a little bit mandrolic making the buttons and that, but once you've done it, that's it, done. And it just results in a nice, oh, how do we describe it? A nice geeky, nerdy calculator that's got some superb functions that electronics hobbyists like myself and, and geeks would, would love to have. And yeah, I'm definitely going to keep this and use it in the workshop. So you will see this in future videos. Uh, really, really do like it. Uh, I hope hopefully you would agree. Um, on that note, I, I got this from Amazon, paid with it with my own money, it wasn't supplied to me for your charge. This is just my video that I'm building and reviewing it myself. Um, but in the description below, I will put an affiliate link uh, to this kit. So if you do um, want to purchase it, by all means, please use my link. Um, you'll pay the same price. Um, you know, get it next day delivery, all that good stuff. Exactly the same price as you would do going direct. Uh, the only difference is I get a small commission which helps support my channel. So ho hopefully you don't mind me doing that. Um, but yeah, brilliant. Right, really enjoyed it. 
thank you very much for watching um as always if you'd like uh, sorry if you did like the video please give me a thumbs up if you didn't give me a thumbs down if you're watching this just click on one or the other just now it really doesn't matter um youtube like to see thumbs up thumbs down comments all that good stuff um to, to help you know promote the channel and, and get it featured and all that good stuff and it's it is quite difficult as a, as a smaller channel um and you know there's there's many channels in, in the same sort of boat as myself in fact down in the link uh description below i'll i'll put a link or links to uh a few guys that i know a uh, similar type channels so please go and check them out and and likewise if you enjoy what that you're seeing with their channel click that subscribe button that said um if you haven't already subscribed to my channel uh, click on my fat head down here and if you'd oblige me by clicking on the bell as well you'll get notifications when i upload new videos they're not always as long as this i do promise that uh, and i will be doing some more live videos um, as i finesse my setup and so i can give you a quality live video so yeah if you could do that that would be fantastic anyway rambling on um thank you very much for watching as always take care of yourselves and all the best